The Code Connector Worker integration uses the three-step process to detect and report changes. First, it looks at the transaction log and determines which workers have changes that it is monitoring. What kind of changes that have happened to a worker? Are the changes related to the changes that I'm looking for? Let's say, the integration is only looking for, like I said, higher than terminations. It is looking. Did this worker have any change in terms of higher or termination? It looks at the transaction log and tries to find it out. For each worker with a matching transactional change. It compares their report fields to see what were the changes. What changes have happened to the report data? What changes have happened to the data for that particular worker? First, it will identify only the workers who had a change. Then it will compare each and every field to see what information was changed. If at all, there is a change. Then it checks when was the change made and with what effective date. What change? What are the data changes? Which fields have changed? When was it made? With what effective date? These things it monitors and finds out. Now. Then it will think if the worker has any changes in the field, values of eligibility, etc. Then Workday will say whether it's a new addition, it's an update, it's a new change, it's a new update or is it a deletion. This is the high-level overview. But then to actually do this change, Detection Workday makes use of certain fields. These are some parameters that we will see in our integration. First is the full diff extract. Now you can configure the Workday code connector to select all workers who meet the eligibility criteria and then determine changes for the return data. Now this is done for performance, to improve the performance. Then it works with another field called Worker Eligibility Eligibility Criteria. Eligibility Criteria is nothing but a filter condition. It is a filter condition to identify a population of workers whom you are considering. For example, you are creating a connector to A, D, P. You are configuring a core connector. You want to send the file to ADP. Now ADP is your payroll vendor for North America. Let's say. Then will you include the workers who are not in North America? Maybe your European employees, your Asian employees, your Latin American employees. Will you include data for them in this integration to ADP? They may not need it. It is not relevant. Correct. So we would not need it. So what is the eligibility criteria? What is the filter criteria for sending data to ADP? Only the employees in North America. It can be any. It can be a manager, a supervisor, etc. So you will all. Only the eligibility criteria will say employees in North America. That is your eligibility criteria. So we have to define that. We have to define that eligibility criteria. And the eligibility criteria is nothing but a true-false field. 
It's just a true-false field and in that true-false field you can configure all the options. Like you can create a calculated field, you can use an existing one to define the worker eligibility. So for all workers it will be either a true or a false. Either you are eligible for this integration or you are not eligible for this integration. Let's say, we are looking at only managers, only managers, not anyone else. They're only looking at managers because we are going to give them some special kind of health and wellness program. Only managers, only people who are managers. They are going to get a special kind of allowance. So we are going to send that to an external system who are actually going to process the gift via an Amazon gift card. So we are going to send the information to Amazon. Okay, only for managers. So then, what would be the eligibility criteria? Is manager. We'll check whether the worker is a manager or not. And can you create a calculated field? Right. Let's try to create, let's think about it. We'll create a calculated field. What is the function that we will use? True, false or booleans. We will use that. And then what would be? How will we write that eligibility criteria? What will be the condition there? Management level. Yes, that's what we did for our compensation eligibility criteria as well. Yeah, right, remember. So we will use the field management level and we will say management level equal to manager. Right. So that means all our managers will be included as part of that. Correct. Right. So we will be able to do that. So that is how we create eligibility criteria here. So we will create a calculated field, which is a true-false field, or we will use an existing field, which is a true-false or a Boolean field. For example, I want only my list of active workers, only my active workers, not prior workers, not former workers, not terminated workers, not future hires, not the workers who are on leave on a long leave, on a leave of absence. We only need workers who are active workers. So there is an existing field in Workday Boolean field, of course. It is. It says is active. So if my, if that is the case, if the worker is active, then the worker will be marked as true and will be included in the eligibility criteria. Right. So this is a very interesting and important field. The eligibility criteria. We have to select that when we configure our integration. So what does the eligibility criteria do? The eligibility criteria is nothing but the filter criteria, which identifies the population of workers that we are going to monitor. Okay, 